we found it so hard to watch How to Make Millions Before Grandma Dies. Not because we couldn't bear to watch a film that revolves on such a heavy topic, but as in literally, we almost decided not to watch the film anymore because the cinema at the first mall we went to, SM Grand Central, was sold out. We were already ready to call it a day and just go shopping. But we were curious, so we decided to head over to SM Manila to see what all the hype was about. So was it worth it to jump from mall to mall just to watch How to Make Millions Before Grandma Dies? Yes, absolutely. Hi, I'm Sydney, and this is How to Make Millions Before Grandma Dies. More than just millions. Going into the film, I was expecting something similar to The Bucket List, where two terminally ill men try to complete their bucket list before they kick the bucket. So I thought How to Make Millions Before Grandma Dies was literally about making millions as a promise to a dying grandma. So I was surprised to find that M, our main character, is actually a shrewd grandson attempting to inherit millions by winning over his amma through taking care of her. Still, the film wasn't groundbreaking. It wasn't revolutionary either. We actually know how it goes, how M will eventually learn to do the right thing. But that's the beauty of the film, the simplicity, the stillness, and the familiarity of it. It's a story about transformation and how doing the right thing doesn't always start with the right intentions. As a Filipino Chinese, this film triggered so many memories. I remember visiting my grandpa or Ang Kong's house on Sunday afternoons. Seeing Amma in the film, picking something nice to wear, made me wonder if my Ang Kong was also excited to see us visit. The cluttered house of Amma reminded me of my Ang Kong's very cluttered house too. And of course, what's an Asian household without complicated family dramas? Sadly, I've also witnessed my share of complex family issues, passing around a family member no one wanted to care for, complicated disputes over inheritance, troubled relatives taking advantage of my kind great-grandpa, or Taikong, and my Guacong's gambling debts. Watching How to Make Millions Before Grandma Dies truly took me down memory lane. However, it wasn't just the cultural elements and aspects of family life that felt familiar. The film's plot also reminded me of Anton Chekhov's The Bet. In The Bet, a banker and a young lawyer debate whether a life sentence or the death penalty is worse. To settle the issue, the banker bets two million and challenges the lawyer to stay in solitary confinement for five years. The lawyer recklessly extends the bet to 15 years, but just five hours before the deadline, the young lawyer escapes because he realizes the shallowness of material wealth. Similarly, in How to Make Millions Before Grandma Dies, when M sees his cousin Mui receive a house worth 10 million baht for taking care of their ailing grandfather, M decides to take care of his amma, hoping for a similar reward. In the end, M does receive the millions he so desired, only to spend it all on one thing, the large burial plot his grandma had always wanted. So what changed? What made M give up his so-called greatest desire? When M took care of Amma, he discovered many things about her. But one quality stood above all, Amma's unconditional love for her children. Despite being left alone most of the time, Amma always loved her children. As I've said earlier, she was always excited to see them and her grandchildren visit on Sundays. However, there were two moments in the film that truly highlighted Amma's love. The first was when she sacrificed eating beef to pray for her eldest son, Kyang, to recover from his sickness as a baby. Coming from a Buddhist Catholic family, I know that many Buddhists will make lifelong sacrifices, such as giving up beef for the health of a loved one. The second moment was how Amma continued to care for her youngest son, Soi, despite his gambling problems. Soi even stole from his mother, yet Amma still loved him. She knew he only came to her when he needed something, and that was alright with her. Amma even chose to give him the house, 
knowing full well that he'll sell it to settle his debts. M learned so much from Amma that he himself demonstrated unconditional love when he gave his silver belt to his ungrateful gambling uncle. As we reflect on M's journey in how to make millions before grandma dies, it becomes clear that love has the power to transform us in ways we may never expect. M started his journey with selfish intentions, hoping to secure an inheritance. But what he found instead was something far more valuable, more than just millions, unconditional love. Isn't it amazing how experiencing love can truly change a person's heart? It makes us wonder if there's a greater love out there that's always been waiting for us. A love so profound that it would give everything, even a one and only son, for a world that deserves so much less. This kind of love is often hard to comprehend, but when we see glimpses of it in stories like how to make millions before grandma dies, it reminds us that love, in its purest form, and more than just millions, is the greatest gift we can receive. Thank <laughs> you.